The idea behind a VPN is to grant you a secure tunnel to encrypt and send your traffic to a safe place and then navigate through and access protected resources across the internet. Let me ask you a question. What do we do if the resources we want to access are private and protected and cannot be accessed publicly through the internet? Like, for example, connecting to your office when you're away on vacation. Well, for starters, you shouldn't call it a vacation if you do that. But we should have a way to connect to private resources that ensures invisibility and security, right? Or else you and your company will be in trouble. What do we do if we want to surf the internet but don't want to be exposed or vulnerable to cyber threats? The answer is to use a VPN, a virtual private network. All right, let's start backwards. First, a network is a connection between two or more devices. That's it. When you're using the internet, 99% of the time, you're part of one network or more, mostly public networks. This brings us to talk about public versus private. Private means the devices cannot be reached publicly through IP addresses. That is to say, the whole network is publicly inaccessible and unavailable because the addressing space they operate in is local and not routable across the internet. Now, most private networks are physical local networks with physical devices having physical network adapters. Is there any way? to have this privilege without physically connecting to these private networks? The answer is yes, we create a virtual connection. And here comes the virtual part. You see, we have the IP layer, right? The whole internet is built on it and resources are accessed publicly, right? Now, if we abstract this public layer and use existing protocols to assign virtual network adapters to devices and assign them different IP addresses, we are essentially creating a virtual connection between nodes and that is a VPN, an apparently physical, securely hidden connection. And and that is really cool, my friend. But here comes another question, a connection between what and what? Well, in the case of a VPN, the connection is between your device and a VPN server. Let me show you how that works and how to use a VPN and I promise you, you'll have a better understanding after that. Technically speaking, a VPN is a set of tools and protocols that allow us to create this new virtual network. Of course, the devices could be computers, mobile phones, routers, etc. The problem is that this extra layer adds extra overhead. So it might cost performance and speed when navigating the internet. For this reason, there are two types of VPN connections, full tunnel and split tunnel. A full tunnel VPN connection means all your traffic and activity goes through the VPN connection. So you use the VPN for every single request you make. A split tunnel connection, on the other hand, means you choose what type of traffic to use the VPN for and the rest of your activities will be public. So you kind of split the traffic into secure traffic for data and activities that you want to keep private and anonymous for example, and public traffic for the rest of your legal activities. Uh, I'm sorry, did I say legal? I meant public activities. Now, how does this work? When we make requests on the internet, data gets transformed into packets and is sent via one or more IP routes to reach its destination. However, when you choose to use a VPN, your computer has to have a piece of software called a VPN client that will connect you directly to a VPN server. This connection is the first important element. It has to be encrypted and hidden. And for that, a set of protocols are used. By means of these protocols, the virtual network is created and the VPN server gives your computer a new virtual network interface with a new IP address. A new route on the internet is added to route packets coming from your computer to the VPN server and then the VPN server will forward the request and all your traffic for you but this time your request will have different metadata. It is almost the same as what happens when you are using a proxy server. Requests and responses pass through the VPN server so that you will always stay protected and invisible. And this is how your internet traffic is masked by encrypting it and routing it along with other people's traffic throughout the VPN private network. Sweet. This is called a layer three VPN and it uses the existing IP infrastructure along with advanced encryption protocols to distribute VPN traffic. Great. And one way VPNs ensure security and privacy is through encapsulation. For traffic that shouldn't travel in public routes, it gets wrapped in packets that normally use this public 
routes. It's kind of like smuggling, but it's not. Data gets wrapped by other data before it is sent. And some of the protocols used in VPN networks take care of these aspects by wrapping, delivering, and unwrapping packets and forwarding them to their ultimate destination. Great, going into further details on how VPNs operate means diving deeper in the inner workings of these protocols. Having said that, if you want to dig deeper, let me give you a bit more details. One of the most common security protocols is OpenVPN. It is an open source solution for creating highly secure VPNs. It uses OpenSSL encryption and handles key exchange using TLS. With this, it sets up a tunnel between endpoints for secure communication. It is typically run over UDP, but it can be used over TCP connection to secure web traffic. OpenVPN is best used to avoid detection and network limitations. Of course, there are other protocols used to create different types of VPNs such as L2TP over IPsec, IKEV2, browser-based VPNs, etc., each with their own features. Sweet. Now, if you want to use a VPN, you need to decide first if you'll use your own VPN server or use third-party services. They both have their own advantages and disadvantages. Should you want to set up your own VPN server, keep in mind that you need to consider different types of devices and operating systems. Also, you will not be able to bypass censorship and restrictions around the globe if you use your own VPN server. And another problem with that is that the security aspects might not be as strong and reliable as third-party solutions. However, using your own VPN means you're in charge of your own traffic and you can access your home or office remotely without the need for a middleman. Anyway, it's a trade-off game and you must choose what's best for you. Great, once you have a VPN server available and the VPN client installed, this is how it works. The first thing is to authenticate to the VPN server. The VPN now creates a tunnel between you and the VPN server and all your online activity now must pass through the VPN server. And bear in mind that your internet service provider cannot detect this channel thanks to the encryption. So before anything is sent, the VPN client on your computer encrypts data and sends it to the VPN server through the secure tunnel. The VPN server will decrypt the data and assign it a different IP address that will make you appear to exist on the local network of the VPN. Then then the VPN server will send your requests to the destination and receive the reply for you. The reply will be encrypted and sent back to your computer. After that, the VPN client will receive the reply and decrypt the message. And voila! You can now relax and surf the internet securely and anonymously, my friend. No IPS tracking, no attacks, no nothing. Of course, using a VPN will not make you absolutely and perfectly immune to any threats, but with VPNs, it's really difficult. And if we are to list privacy and security solutions on the internet from weakest to strongest, it will go like this. First, proxies. They are pretty good for other reasons if your top priority is not privacy. And feel free to check my last video about them to know more. Then, VPNs, and we talked about that, and ultimately, Tor networks, which are the strongest in terms of security. You can check the description below for some highly recommended VPN solutions. So let me recap quickly on why you would use a VPN. But before, don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment if you have any questions, suggestion or anything. And of course, by now you have a pretty good idea about the security and confidentiality advantage. It's a good way to prevent the internet service provider tracking you and logging every single thing you do online. You can also use VPNs to bypass censorship and restrictions to access content, testing your business in different locations around the globe is also another reason why you would use a VPN and related to this you can use them to research competitors in different areas and find out about business secrets. Also, if you are a web developer, you can always use VPNs to protect intellectual property and client's data. And there might be a couple more, but these are the main ones. I hope now you have a pretty good idea about VPNs. If a VPN feels so similar to a proxy, you can check my previous video about proxies in which I explained the difference. Until the next video, stay well and stay tuned.